Good morning. We will discuss today one case study on multiple linear regression. Let us see this case study first. Uh, today's discussion will be on the case description, what are the variables and how we have measured the variables, the sample collected, examination of the sample data, model and results, model adequacy tests, model diagnostics find followed by summary. The study was conducted in a own gear manufacturing plant of India. Manufacturing process comprises heating of ingots in crucible furnace, casting of molten metal in centrifugal casting machine, gear cutting in a hobbing machine. The purpose of this case study is to model the relationships of ohm wheel quality with hobbing process variables. Now, see the schematic diagram of the entire process. Here, what we are saying this is the hobbing machine that home ohm wheel rims are the input to this machine. This machine basically make the makes the or cuts the gear teeth and the ohm gear from the teeth gear teeth point of view backlash and contact are the two important quality variables and the ohm wheel which is input to the hobbing machine here the input um, ohm wheel quality is measured through hardness copper percentage, silicon percentage, nickel percentage and phosphorus percentage. So, what I mean to say that ohm wheel as an input to this hobbing machine has certain quality features. These are known as input quality and this input quality variables are measured through hardness, copper, silicon, nickel, phosphorus with appropriate units of measurement. Now, this hobbing machine is basically as I told you that this will cut the uh, gear teeth. So, it has certain process parameters which are given here speed in rpm, feed millimeter per revolution, depth of cut in millimeter. These are the variables which can be controlled by the operators. Now, there are noise variable for example, humidity percentage and also ambient temperature that could be noise variable. So, here our sole interest is to use multiple linear regression to show that that multiple linear regression is applicable and it will give us some benefit in analyzing the relationship between the own gear quality variable like backlash, like contact percentage with the controllable process variables like speed, feed, depth of cut and noise variable like humidity and the ohm wheel rim quality variables which ohm wheel is the input to this machine. So, essentially what do you want to do? we want to say that backlash this can be function of that input quality can be process controllable variables and process noise variables, process noise variables and this function we are saying it is a linear function, linear function. So, we definitely test the linearity as well as other assumptions related to MLR that is multiple linear regression.
multiple linear degradation and we want to see that whether we will be able to we will be able to transform this hobbing process hobbing process where the quality variable we are at present we are considering only backlash although contact is another quality variables which output from the hobbing process controllable and uncontrollable variables are there. So, can this process be represented in terms of an equation y is function of x. Okay. So, that is our sole purpose. So, in order to do so, let us see that the characteristics of the variables which is governing the total hobbing process and their specifications what is given by the customers. So, hobbing process each customer to the preceding process here it is basically centrifugal casting. Centrifugal casting is one process which which basically produces that worm worm wheel worm wheel rim and depending on the process conditions and input to this centrifugal casting process the quality of worm wheel will be determined. So, here hobbing is customer to casting process. Okay. Now, the after hobbing the worm gear is formed. This worm gear is sold to different customers end users end users. Now, the end users they give certain specification related to backless related to contact percentage. These two are the quality characteristics of the ohm gear from end users point of view. Similarly, when the hobbing is accepting the ohm wheel rim from the centrifugal casting. So, there is also hobbing is also given certain specification to the quality variables related to horn wheel rim which is produced by the casting process. In addition what is required the operator here he will control the process variable within certain range. So, what do I mean? I mean that the output of horn wheel these call these are known as quality variables here these variables have certain specifications. which are pro, which are determined by the basically end users which are given by the end users not in method that precise that numerical form, but end users customers requirement converted to specification here. Now, similarly in order to achieve the, the or produce the worm gear within the specifications you are also specifying certain range for the this very process variables and hobbing as a customer from the centrifugal pro casting process point of view hobbing is also specifying certain certain ranges for variables related to whom worm wheel quality. Okay. So, this is what is given here that hardness suppose input is worm wheel rim hardness measured is brainness hard, hardness number. So, that should be greater than 90. Copper is a chemical composition that percentage should be 87.22 to 88.72 within this range must be there. Silicon similarly 9.7 to 10.75, nickel phosphorus should be less than 0 0.03 percent all our percent figure. So, this is what hobbing section requires from casting centrifugal casting section in terms of worm wheel rim quality. And output quality if you see here that backlash 1.17 to 1.68 millimeter and contact 30 to 40 percent contact. 
this is given by the end users that mean the who are purchasing the own gear. So, in between what happened the process controllable variable by speed, feed, depth of cut these are the specification 5 to 10 rpm 1.1 to 1.2 millimeter per revolution 0 0.25 to 2 millimeter. This is what is the process variable range determined by the engineers there and the plant is operating under humidity condition 65 to 95 percentage that is throughout the year. So, now this humidity is such a thing it cannot be controlled because it is weather condition. So, this is that is why this is termed as noise. So, you have input quality, you have process variables, you have noise variables and you require to have certain output quality. So, can there be relationship between output quality to input quality, process variables or process conditions and noise present while producing the own gear. Okay. So, this is our sole purpose for modeling the total system and there are many techniques available to model, but here we will use multiple linear regression. Okay. So, now in order to do so what will be the next step? Your next step will be data collection means you must know that what is the manufacturing system here that is the hobbing process we have given here and you have to collect data. The hobbing process is totally characterized by their with their specification here in this figure clearly it is given. Okay. So, 100 conforming observations over 52 months were collected from this plant. So, that means what is our n sample size n equal to 100. How many what is the period of collection 52 months period of collections. So, during 52 months the production unit produces certain ohm gear certain number of ohm gears out of which some are rejected or that goes to reworks and some are accepted. Those are rejected that is known as non-conforming and those accepted these are known as conforming. So, these conforming items are considered conforming observations are considered. So, 100 conforming observations were considered. Okay. So, why 100 conforming of uh, one is considered because we want to model a regression or we frame a regression model in such a manner that it will basically talk about the general behavior of the process. You are getting me? Suppose, in case we have two variables suppose y versus vis a vis x and this is my data set collected and the scatter plot is showing like this some data point is here. So, it is outlier outlier and and you will find out it, it will be most likely non conforming. So, we do not want this type of observations in the model fitting. So, we will be considering only the general mass here here from customers point of view all conforming products are considered correct. So, this is our data when you collect data from case study point to immediately you have to find out the descriptive statistics. By descriptive statistics when you have continuous data we talk about mean and standard deviation. This will give you much idea about the behavior of the process getting me. Now, see if I see the 100 that whim uh, that it means wheel rim or wheel rim that is considered. So, here the hardness the mean value is 108.85 standard deviation is 2.06 
copper mean value is 88.05, standard deviation is 0.29, silicon 10.32.25, nickel 1.50 and standard deviation is 0 0.01, phosphorus 0 0.014 and that standard deviation is very less. So, similarly if you see the backlash that is 1.44 is the mean and 0 0.09 is the standard deviation contact 35.29 degree that we are talking about this is in terms of percentage percentage and 2.59 is the standard deviation and similarly humidity all over the year it is 80.38 that is the mean, mean value and 5.87 is the standard deviation and here the standard deviations are 8.21, uh, 1.42 standard deviation, 8.2 is the mean value per speed, similarly feed and similarly depth of cut. If you assume that the process is multi, uh, multivariate normal, then what will happen? The individual variables will be univariate normal. So, under such conditions so for everywhere you can find out what is the mean value and then as you know the standard deviations you will have a you will have a distribution like this. For example, if I considered hardness, so hardness the data mean is 108.85 and this side and this side this stress sigma uh, cap that is 2.06. Now, what is the specification given for hardness that it should, it should be greater than 90. Okay, if it is 100, it may be 90 will be somewhere here. 90 will be somewhere here. Now, we have to see that what is this percentage coming here. So, this is the first level of work you have to do okay, before fitting into the um, this, but as I told you that any 100 non conforming products are considered, conforming products are considered. So, it seem it indicates that it, it does not indicate that uh, this one the hardness is not less than 90, because this conforming or non conforming these are basically related to the backlash. The worm wheel quality, these are related to worm wheel quality. So, <clears throat> you will be having a idea with the mean and standard deviation and the uh, your this one what is this um, I say the normal distribution ok this is the first level. So, MLR MLR talks about that one of the assumption is multivariate normality multivariate normality. So, we will assume that that the backlash or contact contact they will definitely be univariate normality. In addition what we have assumed that even in the process variables they also behave like like a coming from a normal distribution or normal population and that is also we are considering although in multiplication that we are not interested in the x distribution we are rather interested in the y distribution because error will capture the y's part and x will be uh, treated as the fixed values different fixed values ok. So, next step is we all of you, all of you know that MLR that certain assumptions what are those assumptions must be followed. for assumptions will be one will be linearity, second one will be homoscedasticity, third one will be uncorrelated error terms, and fourth one will be uh, what we have seen that errors are independent identically distributed and error follows basically normal errors will be normally distributed also 
that is why normality. Okay. So, we should not wait for model fit and then get the your error value and then you test the normality that we will do definitely when we fit the model. But here before that let us see from the data raw data collected will we get any kind of information which will help us to judge about the assumptions of the model. For example, if you see one of the thing is the linearity with respect to the y variable if we consider y is backlash here although y can be contact, but first we will consider y is backlash then backlash versus copper you see it is almost haphazard random relationship perhaps that copper percentage is not contributing perhaps. Similarly, if you see silicon if you see nickel phosphorus and hardness it is very difficult to say there is relationship, but it is also not true that there is non linear relationship. Okay. So, if you see the second plot where we are talking about backlash versus speed it is continuously decreased backlash with respect to increase in speed you see this way it is coming. Similarly, if you see feed you, it is difficult to tell, but the variability here is more here is less, but I not clear that whether there is any decrease or increase relationships with uh, increase in speed backlash will decrease or increase that type of relation is not there. But in case of depth of cut there is clear cut increase in relationship, but in case of humidity again it is random very difficult. So, first is that means what is what you require you require to see the scatter plot. Then you will find out certain relationship, but these are subjective. Then you go for correlation matrix. You go for correlation matrix. So, correlation matrix we have computed here, and the correlation matrix is shown like this. So, backlash, vis a vis, speed, feed depth of cut, humidity these are process related variables copper, silicon, nickel, phosphorus and hardness, hardness these are input quality variable. Now, if you see backless vis a vis all those input that independent variables what we are considering in this case you see that backless versus speed there is negative correlation and which is significant. Similarly, backlash versus depth of cut there is positive correlation which is also significant. Backlash versus nickel there is negative correlation and significant correlation and backlash versus hardness this negative, but significant correlation. So, this correlation coefficient will give you certain idea that way whether these variables the independent variables so called independent variables in the model they are contributing to the dependent variable backlash or not. In regression dependent and independent side will be there. So, in this case we are talking about one dependent variable that is backlash and several independent variables 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 independent variables. Okay. From correlation matrix one another important aspect you are finding out that the independent variables are also not perfectly independent, because there are some correlations between the independent variables which are also significant. For example, speed versus your depth of cut uh, there is negative significant correlation. Similarly, speed versus nickel positive significant correlation, humidities, uh, humidities, humidities vis a vis silicon there is negative correlation and copper vis a vis silicon there is negative significant correlation. Similarly, copper vis a vis hardness this correlation is there. So, we can say that there are certain correlations amongst the independent variable, but uh, there are many many other uh, coefficients correlation coefficient which are not significant. 
So, we cannot say 100 percent that these variables are independent in that sense from correlation structure point of view, but what we can say that uh, we can proceed for regression because multi, uh, this type of correlation correlated structure in the independent variables if it is the large enough then it will distort and it will be it will be also known from the diagnostics from variance very that is inflation factor variance inflation factor and other things are there we will check at this point in time what I mean to say yes there are certain independent variables which are basically contributing towards backlash that is the dependent variable. So, our aim is we, we can go for multiple regression correct. So, what we have tested then we have tested that linear relationship is there and we can go for multi multiple linear co regression, but we also want to test from the from the raw data we want to examine that the normality of the y variable. So, if, if you, you know how to go for normality there are different approaches pp plot that is probability probability plot you can see the histogram you can go for quantile quantile plot. So, there are many plots. So, now you see this pp plot here if you see the histogram of backlash it is not perfectly normal you cannot say this is the 100 percent normal, but definitely there are little departure from normality and if we see the probability probability plot also there are certain points out of the confidence band. So, it is not 100 percent normal, but the departure also not that much that we should be worried at this point in time. We can we can think for uh, those departures after uh, model diagnostics. Then you have to fit the model. Okay. So, this is our regression fit our regression equation and I am sure that you can recollect that what are the uh, what is the formula we have used to calculate beta, beta cap is x transpose x inverse x transpose y. This is the regression equation we have used and using this where x is your design matrix. 1 1 1 2 1 and like this your x 1 1 x 2 1 then x n 1 similarly x 1 p x 2 p like this x n p. Okay. And y is here one variable only so y 1 y 2 dot 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 y n and your equation regression equation is y is x beta plus epsilon a y is n cross 1 x is basically n into p plus 1. So, beta definitely will be p plus 1 cross 1 and epsilon will be n cross 1. So, beta our beta is beta 0 beta 1 to beta p in this case we have p equal to 9. So, your total p plus 1 will be 10 and your beta estimated is that is why first one is the constant, second one is our we have taken the that copper related then silicon related, nickel related, phosphorus related hardness related then also your speed feed depth of cut and humidity speed feed depth of cut and humidity. So, these many things will be there. So, I can say this is my beta 0 cap this is beta 1 cap. So, like this 1 2 3 4 5, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so, this one will be your beta 9 cap. Okay. Now, what are the values we found out from our regression model? Our regression model we found out like this that is 1.35, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0
then 0 0.0086, 0 0.0133, 0 0.0133, minus 0 0.0088, minus 0 0.2, minus 0, minus 2 point, minus 2.39, then minus 0 0.0058, minus 0 0.0433, plus 0 0.084, plus 0 0.105, plus 0 0.00024. So, this is your beta value for the regression equation we found out. Okay. So, this is related to constant and all those things. Fine. So, once you have estimated equation that the fitted equation that mean we are we are now having y cap equal to x beta cap having this is my beta cap. So, you are able to find out the error error is y minus y cap as you are able to find out the error now you are also able to find out the SSE sum square errors you are able to find out what SSR which is SST minus SSE, you know the degrees of freedom. So, you can go for finding out R square, R square is SSR by SST okay. and in this case, in this case our SSR is 0 0.60 and SST is 0 0.76 which is which is given you 78 point 7 percentage r square value. So, that means what I can say in in total 79 percent variability of backlash can be explained by the independent variable considered. Now, whether 78 percent or 79 percent is to be considered significant or not considering the uh, case where what we have taken, we have taken data from the day to day operation, it is not that experimental data. So, there are lot of variability involved. So, as a result, so we cannot expect that 95 percent uh, R square value will be getting. So, I think it is it is almost 80 percent. So, it is considering the uh, the um, variability involved from material, from operation, from production, from service many points of view. So, I think this 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 is a reasonable model to consider. Okay. Once you consider a get R square then you also may be interested to know whether there is the effect of parameters to the number of observations. So, n and n and p that relationships that you want to test. So, R A square what you will do? R A square will be 1 minus S S E by degrees of freedom that is n minus p minus 1 by S S T by degree of freedom that n minus 1. In this case, this one is 75, 6.5 percent hmm. because our S S E is I think 0 0.76 minus 0 0.60, 0 0.16 and your n is 100 p plus 1 is 10. So, n minus p minus 1 is 90. So, 1 minus 0 0.16 by 90 by 0 0.76 by your n minus 1 is 99, this is giving you 76.5 percent variability of backlash explained. Getting me? Okay. Then, then so this is one. So R square is not bad. Now we will go for ANOVA table. Your case study must show this ANOVA. ANOVA table we test two hypotheses beta j equal to zero for j equal to one to p and all case and h a at least 1 beta j not equal to 0 that is the case. Then you, you calculate the ANOVA table, ANOVA table will be your source 
then degree of freedom S S M S then you test the F source is one is regression second one is error third one is your um, that total is divided like this. So, your degree of freedom is how much there are p plus 1 10. So, it will be p it will be 9 and total will be n minus 1 equal to 99. So, error will be that the difference between the two this is 90 our s s regression is 0 0.60 0 error 0 0.16 and 0 0.76 then m s is s s by degree of freedom 0 0.60 by 9 this will be 0 0.067 then 0 0.16 by 90 this will be 0 0.002. So, your f value will be 0 0.067 by 0 0.002 this is a very high value 36.87 very high value. So, very high value means your if your this is the case then it may be falling somewhere here. Okay. So, probability if you calculate probability it will show software will show almost 0 0 0. So, that means the the independent variables are actually contributing in explaining the variability which is also obvious from the R square table. Okay. So, we are accepting the model from overall adequacy point of view. So, then then we require to test the what we require to test we require to test the individual parameters test of parameters. test of parameters and you all know what we say that beta j cap minus expected value of beta j cap by standard error of beta j cap these follows t n minus p minus 1 under a 0 null hypothesis. So, under null hypothesis expected value of beta j cap equal to beta j equal to 0. So, ultimately your t n minus p minus 1 what you are basically compute getting from this equation that will be that to be compared that to be compared with beta j cap by S e beta j cap. And how do you know S e beta j cap? This will be S e square x transpose x inverse you have seen earlier. Hmm. And now, what is S e square? S e square is S s e by n minus p minus 1 degrees of freedom. So, you know everything. Now, see this slide. You see the slide. The constant copper silicon to all the predictors. Then, these are the values, regular beta values. This is the standard error standard error S e square into x transpose x inverse that particular value that corresponding that with that matrix the corresponding value you have to consider. So, you see here then t value t value is nothing but coefficient by standard error. If you see hardness this coefficient is minus 0 0.00583 3 and your standard error of the coefficient is so low that the t value is becoming large minus 2.20 which says that either this in influence is significant at 3 percent probability level of significance. So, we consider this is a significant contribution in terms of explaining the variability of backlash. Similarly, speed you see speed also this my divided by this is 10.25 this is very large. So, the uh, probability value is almost 0 0 0 we have used mini tab to find out this solution. Feed is not significant because the probability value is 34 percent and you see co although coefficient value is more than speed coefficient in terms of magnitude, but the standard error is high much higher compared to speed standard error and as a result what happened t value becomes quite low and it it makes it insignificant. Similarly, depth of cut is also very very significant. Okay. So, then 
from this result we can say that uh, that yes multiple regression is able to explain all around 80 percent of variability of backlash and the variables which are contributing the maximum or significantly contributing we can say these are hardness, speed and depth of cut correct. Now, you may be interested to know that what are the individual uh, contribution to the overall uh, sum square individual variable contribution to overall sum square you see this is the uh, this is the uh, basically table where which is also obtained through many tab here what happened you see that if I your total sum square is 0 0.76 and and you will find out the regression sum square is 0 0.60. So, if you add all those things this will be 0 0.60 and if I see from the speed is contributing the maximum 0 0.509. So, divided by 0 0.60 it will be 90 more than 90 percent no more than 80 percent. Then followed by nickel followed by depth of cut, but although SS contribution nickel is more than hardness, but nickel is not significant hardness is significant because of the variability of estimates for hardness is much lower than the variability of estimate for nickel getting me. Hmm. Non significant. So, sir, uh, is there any uh, threshold value of probability that uh, we can uh, say that this? Yes, is yes, that is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. We say that 0 0.05, not 0 0.5. What do we say that this is your t distribution? So, your this is the mean value of beta under H0, beta j equal to 0. So, suppose your value comes here, the computed value, and this side is 0 0.025, and this side also 0 0.025. So, if your value falls here, then it is insignificant. So, usually we take 0 0.05. So, the p value what you are getting, if you find out any p value which is less than this, so p less than equal to this, then you blindly accept this because this is significant with 5 percent error ok. Then what we require to do you require to once you um, estimate the you accept the model you estimated the uh, uh, parameters effect in terms of t test and then you require to do the model adequacy test getting me. So, what are the model adequacy tests under model adequacy test definitely what I have told earlier that R square is definitely coming under model adequacy test that basically talks about the whether model value does not apart from R square or the analysis of variance this and that one uh, that if test then we require to test the residuals whether residuals are basically following the assumptions of the regression model or not. So, you see this this diagram here you see although we have seen in y plot probability probability plot for y we find found out that some of the points are out of the straight line within the from the confidence band out of that band. But in the residual case it is uh, it is very much close to the uh, straight line and I think all may be following within the band. If I if I draw a 95 percent confidence band it will be coming like this. So, it simply indicates that uh, that little bit departure has not affected much here. So, that errors are showing normal and if you go for the fitted value versus residual that mean independent observations it should be that there should not be any trend it is there is no trend and if I see the histogram also it is almost normal and if you see the autocorrelation point of view residual versus observation order I do not find any correlation because there is no trend available. So, then what does it to signify it signifies that 
yes the model is adequate from residual analysis point of view also. But if you see clearly here is one point, here is one point, some points are little away from the general mass. So, these are other plot, this is other plot like residual versus individual variable plot. Can you remember I told you that partial residual plot, this is in order to see that whether any of the if, if there is non-linearity, if any of the independent variables contributing to the non-linearity or not. Okay. So, this one is SAS output and here you see that residual versus copper nothing, silicon nothing, we are not getting anywhere any, any departure from um, that. Okay. And interestingly what is happening here this copper, silicon, nickel they are not contributing on to also much in explaining the variability and as a result here also you are not getting any trend. If there is any variable which contribute then there will be a trend. So, here I think the speed is contributing. So, this line is little little inclined, this line is little inclined, but not apparently visible that inclination. Okay. Then uh, there are apart from these four tests, what I have shown you earlier that your probability plot, feet versus residual, feet versus uh, observation order versus residual and your partial residual plot, there are certain other statistics to find out the leverage points. Can you remember leverage points? There are leverage points, there are outliers. So, we talk about outliers with respect to y, we talk about leverage point with respect to x. I think you can remember this. We are given one explanation here. Suppose this is the general mass, here is one point which and this side is y, this side is x, this is this is outlier because this is does not belong with the um, with the with with the with the with the variability zone of y, but suppose some point is here, some point is here, this point is within y variability but much away from x variability this is your good outlier, good leverage, this is your bad leverage. We say good leverage because under good leverage uh, there is no problem in the regression estimate beta cap, bad average distort the line that means the regression equations are distorted. So, these are the things. Okay. So, what we want then? We also require to find out the leverage points other way in one words including outliers you can say influential observations. So, influential observations is very very important to find out. Okay. So, there are many uh, many ways to find out influential observation. One is your um, standardized residuals, second one is your studentized residuals third one is your press residuals or deleted residuals, then there is your HII that is the you know the hat matrix and diagonal elements these are basically leverage points, then your there is Cook's distance, there is uh, D fits, these are different uh, way different statisticians they have identified different um, procedures to um, identify the your what I can say influential observations. What is uh, your standardized residual? Your standardized residual is suppose your residual is this one, this divided by m s e, this is your standardized residual. What is your studentized residual? Studentized residual says that this m s e may be affected by large observations or large residuals like outliers. So, then uh, it, it should be normalized that normalization is done here like your studentized residual if I say R i which is E i by some S square 
into 1 minus h i i. Okay. So, m a c is here s is square. So, we will write then square root of m a c here correct and then this one is so, so this is the the leverage point these values are subtracted from 1 and this is your studentized residuals this value should not be this all values should not be large value okay. and then there are deleted residuals deleted residuals means suppose you have i equal to 1 to n observation so ith observations you delete then you model that run the regression model find out the residuals for the ith value okay so deleted residuals can be found out by this then there is your hii that leverage points values like this so the cutoff for hii is 2 into p plus 1 by n getting 2 into p plus 1 by n so your hii value if it is 2 p plus 1 by n it is more than this it is more than this this is influential okay now you can find out defeat you can find out cook distance now if you go by cook distance cook distance basically uh, talk about di which is r i by p plus 1 into h i i by 1 minus h i i this is your cook distance it is cut of value. So, if d i value greater than 1 this is influential. Okay. So, what I say I first say that h i i greater than 2 p plus 1 by n that is influential d i value following this if greater than 1 that is influential. Okay. So, there is defeats value also d f i t h this defeats cut off is if this one is greater than root over p 2 into root p by plus 1 by n that also denotes influential observations. So, these how these different student residuals measures are coming what is the logic behind it? The logic is uh, ultimately you will find out that similar like that residual then normalized residual then uh, adjusted residuals and like this, but cook distance and defeats they talk about talk from the uh, model prediction power point of view. Okay. So, there is very good discussion of all those things in Montgomery at all. under model diagnostics I think chapter 5 probably under model diagnostics. So, you see here what happened uh, in this slide uh, for the particular case our uh, d i value defeats value I said that defeats value 2 into root over p plus 1 by n this defeats value this defeats value this 2 into root over p plus 1 by n means 10 by 100 I think and this value 2 p plus 1 by n 100 values. So, ultimately if you see this is coming under 0 0.63 I will go to the earlier slide it will be clear uh, this is 0 0.63 cut off. So, if you put a absolute cut off value of 0.63 and all the 100 observations residuals if you plot what you are getting you are getting some observations particularly this observation this observations higher and here and also they are crossing. Okay. There are some observations so I can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 observations are influential observations although they are not distorting much about the regression estimate may be because the departure may not be that high, but if that this, this value is very high, high large value it will distort. So, what will be your action? Action will be it is better to remove those observations.
you go for one more time regression model after removing the leverage bad leverage points. Okay. So, I told you there are 5 unusual observations 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 correct. So, this also available in software you ask Minitab it will give you what are the observations which are uh, influential to be considered. So, then you see and what are the variables that is another important issue is that see what are the variables. So, which are making the observations influential this copper is from the input po uh, x point of view copper, copper is making almost all the things influential and the first one is this is residual, uh, residual residual this R denotes for large standardized residuals and X denote whose X value is large leverage. Hmm. So, it is for that means this 23 has these observations has influence uh, in distorting the regression estimates, but residuals will not distort the estimates. So, that means x that 23 observations and uh, should be removed getting me. So, whenever you find problem in, um, in, in, in fitting regression model definitely you have to see the unusual observations and, and then if possible remove the unusual observations uh, and then again you rerun the model and you require what you require more number of observations that is why. Okay. And when you find out that your regression coefficient r square value is very very low then no need of going to all those things because the, it will not give you any information. Hmm. So, r square is vital. So, if r square value is very low that means either you have not taken the right kind of independent independent variables or your data collection is faulty or data um, or what will happen basically the methodology you adopted in measuring the data that is also not correct. So, there are many issues so that to be taken into consideration. So, what in a in, in nutshell what I mean to say then that the, this particular case study shows you how you will go for uh, multiple linear regression if applicable for the problem you are considering. Okay. So, apart from these things another issue is that I told you that autocorrelation that Durbin Watson statistics here also we have used it is 1.5. So, Durbin Watson or DW statistics should be 2 for no correlation, but it is 1.5. So, let slight correlation is there. So, 1 minus r is 1.5. Okay. So, it is negative positive autocorrelation is there. Okay. Next issue is multicollinearity. You have to test it your things are fine it is settled that you are happy with 80 percent variability, but whether there is multicollinearity because the if you go back to your uh, regression uh, not regression that is correlation matrix you have seen that there are some of the variables in the independent side um, which are having a high significant correlation coefficient particularly speed versus depth there is high correlation. Okay, this is high, but not that high that it will distort your regression estimate that much and that is also happened and you have seen that that much uh, disturbance you have not faced apart from your uh, r square value is almost 0.8, but r square cannot be improved um, unless you go for uh, uh, other kind of variables which are basically contributing here because this type of process is um, process basically operates under many variables operators condition operators expertise operators skill those are not considered. So, how can we think that we will be getting that 90 percent or 95 percent of variability explained it is not possible. So, now multicollinearity problem is there or not 
So, 1.90 all those things I think can you remember the multicolority number? Can you can you remember that V i f variance inflation factor? Hmm? This is 1 by 1 minus r j square remember. So, r j means what happened we have taken this x j as a dependent variable and all other independent variables which contributing this then you have found out the r j square. Now, if your r j square is 0 then v i will be 1 if your r j square is 1 then v i f will be infinite very large v i f. Now, in this case your v i f or none of the v i f values are large. So, they are not showing any multicolority problem. So, that means even though one or two things are like this, but no multicolority problem is there getting me. So, then what is your conclusion about the process? that the process variables are able to explain including the input raw input material that material, but it is able to explain and we have found out that two variables emerges significant uh, three variables, but two are that is speed and depth of card these are process variables where you have control hardness cannot be controlled because it is the it is it will be controlled by the centrifugal casting shop not here. So, we have control you can improve the backlash ok. This is one step, but there it requires further the optimization that what what will be the what will be the setting points process setting points that statistical optimization using response surface methodology can be found out response surface methodology ok. So, we will not discuss this. Hmm. In other words we have considered only linear regression that may be non-linearity, there may be quadratic effects, there may be interaction effects we have not considered, but those things also require to be considered for a full model a different kind of model ok. Thank you very much.